What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an add-on for Blender that allows you to quickly create procedural insect swarms. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so insect swarm is a new add-on from Robin Patilko. And basically what it is, is the tool that allows you to quickly generate procedural insect swarms. Now, there's multiple different kinds of swarms that you can generate inside of this add-on. So if you kind of scroll down a little bit, you can see this, you can see all the different types of um, movements that you can generate in here. We'll take a look at those in a minute, but you also get um, access to a library of different insects, right? So you've got both flying insects, um, which is gonna include the bees, the wasps, um, we have flies in here, other, uh, other bugs like that. And then you've also got crawling insects, which are gonna be the insects that actually crawl on the ground. So you can use either one of those inside a blender in order to generate swarms. All right, so one other thing to be aware of is that this is only for Blender version 3.6 because it's working on simulation nodes. So um, just make sure that you have Blender 3.6 or above in order for this to work properly. All right, and so when you download this, this is basically going to come with a zip file that looks like this. And in this case, you don't actually install this as an add-on, you actually bring it in as an asset. So what you wanna do is you want to extract this file. When you extract this file, it's going to come with three example files, right? You've got your centipede, you've got your crawling, and you've got your flying. It's going to come with a readme, and then there's an assets folder. You're going to want to take that assets folder um, and put it wherever you keep your assets because you're going to reference it in Blender. And so when we jump over into Blender, the way this is going to work is you're going to want to go up to edit preferences, and you want to add the file path to your asset libraries. So when you do that, that's gonna give you the ability to access those assets directly inside of Blender. Again, usually I set my import method on this to append rather than append or use data, um, but that's kind of up to you. So once you've done that, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have access to the assets folder in your asset library. So if you open that up, you can see how this has really two different kinds of things in here. So first off, it's got the models themselves, right? So say I wanted to bring in this butterfly right here, right? If I drag that in, that's basically just an asset file um, that is going to be something that is referenced by the swarm systems. But if you hit the space bar, or you hit play in order to play your animation, you can see how this has a moving animation associated with it. And that's the case both with the, uh, that's the case both with the flying bugs as well as the crawling bugs, right? So let's say that we brought in the crawling fly right here and we take a look at it. Notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna have the movement animation associated with it and it's going to crawl. So these are the assets that you're gonna reference with your swarm files. Now, let's say that we wanted to create a swarm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a shift A and I'm just gonna add a plane. We're just gonna move this over right here. And so what I wanna do, right, is I want to bring in a swarm and have it crawl around on this surface right here. So the way that you can do that is you just want to bring in a crawling swarm system. So I'm gonna take this system, drag it onto the surface right here. And so right now, notice how when I bring this in, so what this does is it brings the geometry node setup into your model. So if I click on this and then go over into my modifier properties, you can see the geometry node system in here. And so what this does, right, is this references a collection. And so in this case, what we wanna do is we wanna create a collection for our surface. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna create a collection, I'm gonna call it surface collection. I'm gonna drag my plane in there and we're going to reference that right here. But then we also want to create a collection for our insects. So I'm gonna create another one of these. I'm gonna call this insect collection right here. And so then you wanna go into your insect collection. You wanna make sure that you've referenced that right here. Now, still nothing is happening, right? I mean, it's kind of happening, I guess. You can see what this is doing is this is generating these insects in here, but all it is is the text items right now saying no insects. So what we need to do is we need to take the insects and put them in here. So in this case, I'm gonna take my, my fly crawling right here and put it in that collection. Well, notice how now these turn into that fly 
right here. And so now if I play this, I'm gonna go ahead and drag another window in here and I'm just going to make that be my timeline just so we can see it. But when I play this animation, notice how it's now making these bugs crawl around on this surface right here. And so let's say that we were to take the surface, right? And I'm gonna stop this animation. I'm gonna tab into edit mode and let's subdivide it a little bit. So I'm gonna add some additional geometric detail right here. And then I'm just going to use proportional editing. And I'm gonna take some of that. There we go. I'm gonna take that surface like this, and I'm gonna move it down, right? So I've still got the surface in here, but I'm moving it down. Well, notice how what's happening right now is these bugs are not following along with that, right? But then as soon as I click play, they do. So what that means is that means that these are basically going to follow along with any surface that you have selected in here in this collection. And so the cool thing about this is adding those bugs is super easy, but making the changes is super easy as well. So I can come over here and I can adjust things like the number of insects. And notice how the number of insects doesn't update until after your animation restarts. And so let's say I was to type in like a thousand. Notice how it doesn't immediately have a thousand in here. You need to restart this simulation right here. Then I've got more of those bugs. But those bugs are going to crawl all over your surface and you can adjust things like the scale of those bugs. If you want them to be bigger or smaller, you can randomize the scale, you can set a different seed, um, and you can also add additional bugs in here. Like say that you didn't just want the flies, you could also add ants. So I'm going to take this ant, put it in that collection. Notice how now a certain percentage of these are ants rather than just the flies right here. So you can use this in order to make these swarm over a surface. So another thing you can do with this system is you can set attraction or avoidance objects. And again, you're gonna put the meshes that you use in these systems. By the way, I tried to do this with an empty and it didn't seem to work for whatever reason. So I would use a mesh like the sphere or something like that as your target object. But if you go down into your attraction or avoidance, you can check the box and reference that collection. And then what this is going to do is as soon as you run your simulation like this, Notice how live inside of the simulation, these are going to chase after that object. And you can set the strength and the distance at which that happens, right? So if you want this to be a little less strong right here, you could reset that. And notice how now only the close bugs are getting that and not even all of them. So um, you can set this to be kind of custom depending on how you want them to chase your object, but you can use the attraction as well as the avoidance modifiers um, or options in order to get these to um, chase after your objects. Okay, and so in addition, you can also add a flying swarm. So if I drag a flying swarm in here, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a swarm that flies, right? Does exactly what it sounds like. Um, but in this case, and we're gonna drop this back into our main collection, um, you still are going to need a collection for the flying insects. So in this case, I would call this collection or um, flying collection. But then you can take the flying bugs, and you can drag them into your scene within that collection. And we'll say that we're gonna do the ladybug and the hoverfly in here. But now if I reference that flying collection, notice how this is going to basically add the flying insects in here in this area. And so the flying swarm is going to be adjustable as well, right? So you can adjust the speed as well as the random speed in here. So some of these might get random speed while others might not, as well as things like you can add hover movement to these objects, meaning some of them are just gonna kind of hover in place. You can adjust the speed and how often that's going to happen um, using the checkbox right here, as well as other things like adjusting the scale of the flight pattern that's in here. So um, you can make a lot of different adjustments to this. Um, you do have the option to use the guidance, um, avoidance and attraction in the same way that you did with the other ones as well. And so this is the example file that comes along with that. That's going to show you um, the flying swarm stay in bounds. Um, this one's gonna demo more the hovering style, like notice how they fly around and then they kind of hover as well as the avoidance and the attraction, right? So you can set these where they're going to avoid 
one object be attracted to the other, as well as giving you the ability to set the guidance in here if you want them to fly along a path or a curve. All right, and then the centipede is a little bit different. It's kind of interesting. So when you first drag it in, it's gonna look something like this. And basically it's going to have a head, legs, and a tail. And this is actually going to procedurally generate your centipede um, based on a length that you set. So what we wanna do is we've got our plane in here and so you need to have a surface collection. So I've created a collection and put my plane in there, but then you can reference this. And well, once you do that and you click play, notice how this is actually going to generate that centipede in here, just like this. So, and that centipede is going to basically randomly move around on your surface like this. And you can adjust the walk pattern scale in here, as well as things like the length of your centipede right? So you can make that longer or shorter when this is first generated, as well as using the scale. But this is basically going to randomly walk around on your surface like this. And so you can also set the spacing or the segments on your centipede like this in order to adjust the way that it looks. But you can either have this move around on a surface, you can set whatever your surface is, whatever you want it to be, right? So if I was to, for example, do a shift A, we're gonna add a UV sphere over here, right? And so I'm gonna move the plane out of my collection and the UV sphere into my collection. Well, notice what this does is this generates that centipede and then it's going to crawl around on the surface like this. And the first time you run it, it needs to like generate the centipede in here. But then once you're done with that, whenever it restarts the simulation, that centipede is going to run on there. But say that we wanted the plane instead, I'm gonna take my sphere back out. You could also use a curve in order to set where you want the centipede to go, right? So I could do a shift A and I'm gonna add a curve. I'll just tab in edit mode and then do an A X to delete the vertices. And then I'm just going to draw a curve on the surface like this. But then you need to take that curve and put it in a curve collection. So same thing, right click, curve, collection. And we just wanna take that curve. We wanna put it in the curve collection and then we can reference it. So when we do that, and actually you don't need to put that curve in a collection, you just need to generate the curve. But once you do that, once you reference the curve, this is going to make this object follow along the curve, just like this. And so theoretically, the way that this works, you should actually be able to add custom models to this for um, probably not the centipede, though I guess you could come in here and you could just edit the meshes if you wanted this to be custom, but um, you could add custom models to the insect swarm and crawling systems because they're just referencing collections of different assets. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. I personally find it super easy to use, but I'd love to hear from you. I'll also link to it on this page. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.